YouTube. We're Ragnarok. Say hi, hun. Hello. She's our camera girl. We're here with <laughs> Rajinku, who is second place, almost first place, but you know, luck is luck. And we'll go over that for the new Holland KMC. How does it feel? Um, it's uh, really awesome, honestly. Um, I, I went in expecting to do well. Uh, I'd like to have topped. Um, but hey, I mean, <laughs> once I did, I was just like, I'm going to keep going, and uh, I had a great time. Yeah. Okay, we have some questions for him, uh, you know, to get some insight and influence. So we're supporting our own team, that's what this is, and yeah, hopefully everyone likes it. Okay, the first question is, how did you get into Kaijudo? Just if, like, somebody came across our channel and was like, what is this game and what's this interview about? What, how did you get into it and, like, why did you get into it? Uh, well, I mean, I've always been into card games. Uh, you know, when I was in uh, grade school, I played Pokemon a little bit with some friends, and uh, then from there, eventually got into Yu-Gi-Oh!, got my friends into that, uh, went to a lot of events, um, you know, the SJCs, the YCSs, I never had any tops. Uh, I mean, I've won a regional, and I've topped at regionals for Yu-Gi-Oh!, uh, and then there's also a... Uh, there was a YCS that I actually got 33rd or something, <laughs> which really sucked because it was 1,100 people there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was like all that way, made it to day two, and then, you know. But Just I mean, I. a bubble. Yeah. Um, but, anyways, no, I, I did play a little bit of Duel Masters back in the day, um, and I really liked it. And then it just. I didn't have anybody in the area that played it. Okay. So that was just. It was like my brother, and that was it. But, uh,. Then, you know, eventually it went away, and, you know, I moved on. I mainly focused on Yu-Gi-Oh!, but then I heard, you know, uh, that there was a rumor about Duel Masters coming back, and I was like, okay, let's, you know, see the truth behind this, and I, like, I started searching around on the web and found the site that said, you know, Kaijudo coming soon or something, and uh, so, I mean, that got me really excited, and then from then on, it just took off, and um, I've been really trying to keep my local scene um, you know, helping, supporting the game. Because, like, when we first started, you know, it was just a league, and there were people just show up and play. You know, it, there was no, like, prize support or anything. I mean, they gave out, like, some badges or, like, a promo card on occasion or something. But, yeah, so like, that's basically how I got into it. Okay. And you're sticking with it, obviously. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just a lot of fun. Oh. Honestly, it, it's, like, the most fun card game that I've played in a very, very long time. So is it your favorite, then? Um, yeah, I'd say so. Um, it's, it's like, not to bash any other card games or anything, but it's like, um, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! for the longest time, and it's just, it's getting a little silly. And <laughs> there's just so many things that just happen, and then, you know, the timing of things, and so on and so forth. And, I mean, to some degree, Kaiju is a lot simpler in, like, the mechanics-wise, you don't have to, it's like, okay, well, you have these effects that are going to happen, and you can resolve them any order you want. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it just, it makes that a bit easier to deal yeah, with. Yeah, and it's it's also a resource-based game, so you can't just mm -hmm. drop your hand in a single right. turn. Right, that's another thing that's uh, definitely kept me with it. It's, uh, you know, you're not just going to win on turn one. Um, if you do, no, you just, you can't. It's yeah, <laughs> it's impossible in a resource-based <laughs> game, which is what I like about it myself. I may get a little bit in here. Uh, the reason I like it more than Magic is because Magic, you cannot always see your land to play your cards. And you'll be sitting on, like, three lands, and you have, like, your five drop in your hand. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything about it. In Kaijudo, you're able to just constantly charge your mana, and your, like, nine and ten drops are playable in this game. Yeah. So it's it's wonderful. Um, okay, so when you started the game out, there's obviously the civilizations, which, you know, banner, which is really cool. Uh, why did you stick with your sieve, and what is it? Okay, well, for the tournament, um, I went, like, all out with darkness, and, I mean, literally, it was, like, everything. Like, um, I chose darkness for my sieve, I chose to run a mono darkness deck, and then I also, I, I had purple sleeves, too, so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you did. I mean, normally, like, my favorite colors, uh in this game are, um, I guess you would call it purple in here, but purple and blue, you know, mm -hmm. the, the darkness and the water sieves. Um, 
and I, I've always been sort of a darkest player, and it's just, I don't know, it's just my play style. Like in Yu-Gi-Oh, I use zombies, um, uh, and I, there was a few times I was at the, top, the I was at the top tables at um, the SJC in like Ohio and stuff, but. Uh, and then, you know, in Vanguard, you know, I play Grand Blue. I mean, it, it's just that kind of thing. It's That's like, I like, I like um, having more strategy to what I do and maybe it not being the most commonly used one. So. Yeah, it definitely surprised the, uh, the KMC in New Holland. Like, people just did not know how to battle your Kalima yeah. deck. Because most of the Kalima decks are like, here's Cordia, here's this. You're just like, Kalima kills everything because it's mono dark, and <laughs> you had serpents to just like put in so much work. It was ridiculous. I was sitting there. He's at no shields, and he's like serpents, Ripper Reaper, Sack Grudge Weaver. You discard a card, I get a shield, and you lose a creature. Yeah, it was it was <laughs> incredible. Okay, uh, so we were kind of, we kind of went over what deck, but I, I mean my question is what deck and why. But more so, I want to get in depth. Why did you stick with your particular build for your Mono Darkness Kalima deck? Uh, well, um... Besi bes sorry, besides liking Darkness, but, like, why your card choices, I should ask. And there's going to be a link in the description, guys, whenever he gets his uh, his profile up and ready so you can actually see what the deck is. Yeah, but, maybe uh, I'll have you do it and I'll just, you know, on my channel. Yeah, uh, or we'll record it like <laughs> after this or something. Okay. Okay. But yeah, why why certain tech choices? Uh, it, it's basically Kalima, guys. You know, it's Kalima, Marker Kalima, Terra Pits, what you would expect. But he's got some interesting tech, and I think that would be since we answer what deck and why, the pieces of tech that he used that others weren't. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, I've been working um, with the deck for a while. And ever since Kalima came out, I've always been like, okay, well, this is a really good card. Yeah. And then, uh, even before they revealed uh, Mark of Kalima, I knew it was going to be pretty much exactly what it was. Uh, it's like, okay, uh, mill top two and kill things. Um, and, I mean, it's playable. And that's amazing to be able to play a card that can kill two creatures uh, for one more mana than Terrapit. And it doesn't target, which right. is super important. Right, it's, it's very, very important. Um, because you have things like Keeper of Laws, you have things like Haven. Um, and, uh, yeah, but I mean, in my deck... Um, actually, you know, let me take a back step here. Um, I've played against Kalima decks, and when I played against them, I noticed the biggest issue was their early game. Um, and if you don't have, you know, something to deal with, like Rush, for example, or even like the mid range or tempo, whatever you want to call them, uh, then you're just going to lose. Because, I mean, Kalima really needs to get to the late game to make it effective. Yeah. And um, that was the idea of my deck. And I used a lot, and I, I do not joke about this, I used a lot of blockers. Um, I <laughs> literally, it's like somebody had. I don't know if somebody mentioned something, but there was that uh, online uh, thing with the badger, 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 mushroom, snake thing. <laughs> um, so in my deck, it's basically blocker, 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 blocker. Then Kalima. The no, the snake would be serpent. Okay. <laughs> Good. Um, uh, anyways, but yeah, they, there's a lot of tech in there, and um, I, Serpents was really really a clutch card in the deck, uh, especially when you combo it with all those, like, chump blockers. Um, and then the chump blockers in themselves basically turned into shields and uh, dealt with things like Rush. It dealt with things like uh, Keeper of Laws because I used Skeeter Swarmer and Stingwing. And Grudge Weaver. Grudge Weaver was amazing against Rush. Um, and I, I'm sorry, people, that I played against that this happened to. Uh, but, like, you know, I had the Grudge Weaver out, and then, you know, like, I played a Bone Blaze to get rid of one of their guys. They bring out another guy, and then I'm turn five or six, depending on when they played a creature. You know, I play the uh, Ripper Reaper, and they just lost out. And yeah. they they had to basically charge their mana until they could get what they needed. And by that time, it was too late. 
Yeah, and that's what's really effective is a lot of people aren't looking at the uh, the power of Ripper Reaper in today's meta. So I appreciate it. The card was okay. I agree with this. The card was bad in Clash format or DSI format. In Shattered format, it's much much better. I think because it get, you have the resources for the late game, like Necros. You have Kalima. You have all these powerful cards that just give you the end game it didn't have before with Draco Thane. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, yeah, the big uh, thing I think that's changed is that we have Necros now, and not that Necros made uh, Ripper like the best, but it really <laughs> kind of did. Like, yeah. Um, there was one game. I'm not sure if it was against uh, Zach Hine from ARG or if it was somebody else, but I literally played back to back because I had enough mana. Uh, back to back Necroses, and I was like, okay, Necros um, take back. Uh, I think Ripper Reaper. I already had a Ripper Reaper in hand. So just I that. played the Ripper Reaper, sacked off the Necros, and then I played my next Necros, brought back. Uh, the, uh, like the other card, and then I brought out the Ripper Reaper and sacked again, and it's just like it was just a loop. That I had a loop it. going, and then you know I had like scavenging Chimera, and you just had everything just yeah. to keep recursion. Okay, so um, let's go over what your matches were, so the the folks get a base idea. Uh, let's start with Swiss, and then we'll move to top eight. If you okay. can do your best on remembering what yeah. Swiss matches were. Um. Well, I, I mean, I wrote down, like, all the things, like, elsewhere, but um, first match was against uh, William Dyer, um, and he was running basically, I think, like, the uh, the Haven build. Um, Haven Turbo or Haven Control? There's a difference. Oh, I don't know. I think was it, it running Kivu? Um, I don't... I think he might have been... I don't know. It was kind of a blur, because, like, okay. I played three... Haven decks. Yeah, and that wasn't... Absurd. Two of them were identical, FYI. Yeah. Uh, they literally were using the same deck. And it so is, there, there were a lot of ki yeah. uh, Kivus around, so I, I, I'm going to say yeah, but... And his deck is especially good versus Haven. That's, like, yeah. his favorite matchup. Yeah. Uh, whereas <laughs> mine is not, so I did, like, the opposite and did worse. I went, just in case the audience wants to know for Ragnarok, I went 2-4 because my worst matchup is Haven. I played three of them, and a Klima deck that just had everything that needed. Not his, but... So I didn't do so well, but he had the right meta call, the right choice. And this Kalima deck is very powerful, guys. It should trounce Haven as long as you pilot it correctly. Yeah, no, I, and, and don't get me wrong, because once you, you guys, once you guys see the deck list, you know, you might be like, um, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, because there's... Like some people mentioned, there's a lot of dual sibs in there. There's uh, not a lot of shield blasts. I'm, believe it or not, I'm only running ten. It's a fifty-two card deck. Um, yeah. I am not relying on shield blast to win the game. Uh, and hear I, that, guys? <laughs> like that's I, I, important. I don't want to be th that guy that runs bottle because oh, it's such an amazing card or oh, variants. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I'm the type of player that's more about control, and I don't want to rely solely on luck. And I mean, in card games, you're going to have some, but at least mine was diminished a bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, sure. it was mostly me playing it, because I had to strategize a bit more playing against uh, games later, which I'll talk about here. Yeah, that's why I said we're going to go over the, the games. Um, but, like, against uh, William, uh, and then I went against... Um, I know I played Matt Robinson, uh, and he was... <sighs> that was I, a rough game? Yeah, it was a rough game, and the only reason I say that is, I mean, he's a good player, uh, but, like, the first game, I was, I, I had probably anywhere from five to ten creatures on board, like I always do at the end of my games for this deck, and I was swinging in there for game, and... Not only did he have one Storm Spark earlier, but he had a second one in his shields. Was that the Squalachi game? Yeah. Okay. Continue with it. Um, so, I mean, I, there was just nothing I could do. And I had to move to game two after that point. Uh, and I had to win out the next two. Uh, so that was rough. Because I had completely uh, just had control of that entire game. 
And then was it game three with the piercing judgment? Oh uh, yeah, it, it, basically it, this is what his deck survived, and I was watching. It was incredible. So um, I mean, the guy played Haven against me. Um, the guy played uh, Squilache scored or Scourge, um, and discarded my hand. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I can just get it back because I had either scavenging or Kalima out, uh, and then. Uh, <laughs> He then next turn or something, he's like, oh, Piercing Judgment, I'm going to bring this back to my hand and I'm going to play it again. And Get rid did... of your Klima or whatever else in your hand again. Yeah. Uh, and then there was like another time where he played something to ramp and he was hoping for a uh, Mono Sieve and in order to play I another card. I think it was Kivu. Yeah, he had Kivu and he was hoping to play, hit a you know, single Sieve. And he hit a multi sieve, and he wasn't able to play the next card because he would have won if he would have been able to. Um, so, I mean. So these are things to take into consideration yeah. with the deck. Uh, what other Swiss rounds do you remember? Um, well, I played against. Um, like I, I played against Zach Hine. I think that was round three uh, from ARG. So shout outs there. Um, he was running a, uh, light water dark or dark water light tempo deck, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Bad mid range. Sorry. <laughs> That's just my opinion of it. Continue. Um, not that the deck's bad. He just, no. the, the, the title of the deck. Yeah. So, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> aside from that, uh, the deck was really good. Um, it's kind of what I expected. Um, I really didn't want to play against that deck because that was kind of a weak matchup for me uh, just because of the tempo they create. and it's Especially yeah. whenever they started using Rizalka, I think that yeah. was another place. Yeah, uh, Rizalka and things like Finbar are, were really difficult for the deck to deal with. Um, but like I said, you know, I have all these low drop blockers, so I can throw them out. I can deal with uh, Keeper um, and, you know, Scamp and stuff too. Uh, but it just came down to... Uh, me getting to my turn seven, playing my serpents, and yeah. I, that was the MVP of that game, uh, definitely, because I <laughs> I kept having to trade off with his creatures, and uh, then I kept gaining shields, and then eventually came to one point in where he practically decked out. Um, he did. Well, he conceded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, but it came to the point where. I had a full board, I had like two or three blockers, and Serpent's out. And the only way for him to get through was to either attack or kill one of my blockers, and that would have given me a shield and just put him in a bad position because my guys could have just revenge killed his guy. Yeah, and believe me, whenever I was watching, because I actually got to view this match in particular, uh, he played Finbar and bounced to Serpent's and almost got through. Mm -hmm. I think you had a blast and it saved you. Um, and the one, I think you had a Terrapit. I, I may have. And I but think that's what, what helped you in the next turn you were able to reestablish. I, I think I might have let him through on the, like, actually attacking the shield because I wanted him to have a creature that I could attack into. Yeah. Because I just play the Serpents again, swing right. in, and then if he attacks again, my Serpents can swing over. Um, and he crashes creatures into other creatures to get shields. Yeah. And I mean... It really doesn't matter because I'll just get them back anyways. That's the idea. It's like I can play Necros, I can attack with Scavenging, I you know Kalima. Um, so I mean, the card's only gone for a short period of time, but they replace themselves with a shield every time. Yeah. So. Any other matches you remember? Yeah, uh, I remember all of them pretty much. Okay. I mean, it's uh, after that um, I played another Haven deck. Uh, probably beat and that one yeah, match. I had no problem with it. Like honestly, no problem at all with Haven because they'll ramp up. They'll get to like ten mana plus. And they'll play and Haven. All I have to yeah, they'll play Haven. And usually, believe it or not, they don't have a follow up. I mean, it's just like Haven and whatever creature they had on board earlier. So you. Just... So all I had to do was just either play Kalima or play Mark of Kalima and just get rid of their board. And again, because my deck's mono dark, it kills two cards or Kalima will kill three cards uh, there's no way to keep up with it um, I mean unless you play a deck like mine which I'm sure will happen uh, you know you're gonna have all these like small blockers but hey you know you got serpents out hey, free shields um, yeah. but then uh, after that 
I had to play against uh, our team member Cat here. Um, so you guys drew. Yeah, we we drew. I I really I don't do like I know nothing about intentional draws or anything. Uh, so I wasn't sure, you know, on pairing scores, all that kind of stuff. So I just drew, and I'm like, okay, well, if she has a shot to get in, and I still have my shot to get in, then that's great. Um, and I, for the record, they both did, so it's really cool. Um, just sidetrack, Miss Kidman's 89 here. Cat hit 13 plays, guys. She got top 16. I almost so got the top eight, but a stupid miss play stopped me. Yeah, so we're proud of her for that. It's the... Believe me, especially with me going 2-4, I mean, but my, my deck choice was bad. I expected tempo everywhere, and it was Haven everywhere, so my bad. Um, but she picked something she's good at with Dragons, so, like, congrats to, like, both, especially. Like, I'm just saying, like, so they did well, so if you guys want any of their talk or advice on what they their choices were, yeah, I mean, I'm sure they're open on their Facebooks. So we'll get back to the interview, sorry. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, then we went to the last round, and I was sitting at 13 points currently, so, I mean, I think I was in no matter what, and sort of looking back at that, I almost felt like I probably should have just give Kat the win, and uh, she would have been able to squeak in, and stuff like that, but, you know, I like I said, I don't know anything about this stuff. Uh, now <laughs> we know. Because <laughs> normally I just play the game, you know, and I enjoy playing the game, but... I, I've never been this close to topping, so... So you just wanted yeah, to be sure. I wanted to be sure that I made it in. And um, I was supposed to play against the guy who inevitably won the entire thing. Uh, and we just drew. And uh, then went to top eight. And then uh, in the top eight, my first round was against Dragons. Uh, it was... I believe it was Yusuf. Uh, uh, if I'm wrong on that, let me know, but... Uh, he was playing dragons, and I just basically I had to play around, uh, you know, like his, just the plays he's using in general. Like, uh, I didn't play anything. He played like a herald, and then he followed it up next turn uh, Lyra. But because I didn't play anything, he didn't have anything to tap, uh, which is one thing I uh, helped during my test sessions here. Oh, with me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but. I was going to say, key advice, guys, um, just some strategies to play against Dragon, just for everyone in general. When they land Herald, try to keep your creatures to minimum or don't play any, um, and play removal instead, because that's, I have a lot of practice against the deck, and if you can, it helps you keep pace, um, it helps you dodge Lyra. A lot of people don't realize that because they think they have to play creatures, and Herald is useless on his own. Lyra is a double breaker. If you get, if you're in a play and they played Lyra, and like let's say you got rid of Bird earlier or something, it's going to be a turn six Lyra leaving to your turn seven Terra Pit, or they're only going to take three shields and there might be a blast in there. So you kind of keep the pace of the game and, and generate it that way. Especially with his deck, you have to think about those sorts of things. And yeah. Ripper Reaper is huge in that kind of situation, I think. I think it'd be better if Ripper Reaper was 5,000 power, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't <laughs> um, disagree. Can't have everything. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, against the deck, uh, one of my concerns going in was, you know, early removal, um, you know, so I had the Bone Blades. I, I was using Toxic Fogs. I, I really probably would have preferred sticking with my original plan of the Ghost Bites, uh, just because it can deal with birds, it can deal with other smaller cards, blockers, whatever. Um, but anyways, so, uh, I needed something around, like, turn five to be able to deal with dragons, uh, and I think one thing I'm considering is something like Death Smoke, uh, but in the actual deck I used, I decided to go with Hydra Medusa, and there's a decent amount of targets, uh, with the screechings and the various scared orbles, and, uh, so, like, I was playing uh, Yusuf, and he brings out, like I said, the Herald and the Lyra. He swings in with the Herald, uh, you know, I get my shield, and then, you know, my turn comes around. Uh, and I had been building up enough mana so that I got to, uh, you know, I was at seven mana, so I tapped two, played my scavenging, tapped five, played Medusa, killed off his Lyra, and traded with his Herald. Um, and then, you know, because I have all the recursion, I can just 
you know, get back or play it again. And uh, that's pretty much what I did because I was like, next turn I played a Necros, brought back the Hydra Medusa, and then I played a uh, either a Chimera or the Ripper Reaper. It's just there's so many combos in the deck, yeah. and uh, I two yeah I'm pretty sure I two owed him. Um, but I mean, not saying it wasn't a good game because it was, but uh, but it's just how your deck handles these matchups. Yeah inside guys whenever you see the profile because the biggest thing is anyone can grab a haven list at the top and play it and not know how to pilot it correctly the same way his list takes a lot of skill to play it takes a lot of forethought and a lot of planning and that's part of the strength and darkness and probably a reason why some of the Klima decks haven't been topping and his got second place yeah. nearly first yeah and I'll get to that here <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll get to that after <laughs> Um, top four, and then yeah. we'll get to the top two. Um, so once I got to top four, I was I was psyched, and uh, I, even more psyched uh, was the fact that I was playing against a rush deck. Um, <laughs> yeah, with all your blockers. Yeah, um, and um, I'm so bad with names, um, but I'll uh, I'll make a comment later and uh, tell you who I played exactly, but. It was um, a long day. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Uh, but anyway, so I played the Rush guy, and um, I just, I mean, I expected to win. Uh, literally, like, he didn't, he didn't have a turn one play. Uh, so, I mean, that's one thing. And then I had a turn two blocker, and I'm pretty sure it was Grudge Weaver. And uh, he played his dudes, and... I let a couple of his guys get their attacks in so I could get some shields and then also to see if he would have uh, ended up swinging with uh, his 1,000 dude. Uh, and then eventually I was just like, um, I got to playing more blockers. I played Ripper Reaper. He got rid of a creature and got rid of the card in his hand. And then, you know, we rinsed and repeated. And he scooped up when I played Draco Thane. Um, because, if, <laughs> I mean, Draco Thane's a thing. But then also getting two more blockers on the board that he can't deal with because they're 4,000 and so on and so forth. And and that's pretty much how game two went, except instead I had, like, four or five blockers and serpents. So every time he attacked, if I would have blocked, you know... Just... And most of his blockers... Did you stick with the spider? I forgot, the, the four-mana spider? No. Okay. Then, sorry, we there was different versions of the deck. I didn't know his exact list. He has Stingwing and the Run Skeeter Swarmer. Yeah, uh, there's there's a playset of each, and then there's a couple Grudge Weavers in there. So his blockers generally always die, which promises him yeah. shields and trades. Right. And, I mean, I, I expected things like, you know, Screeching to be floating around, and I was like, that's fine. You know, you play one Screeching, more than likely that's all it's going to hit. Um, but... You know, if I have the uh, Grudge Weaver out, you discard a card anyway, so... And then, of course, I can just get things back. And it's only two mana, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's it's very efficient. Um, and, again, my deck was designed initially to beat Rush. And, uh, you know, it's like my second game against the guy. Uh, I had a Bone Blades in hand. I had two Screechings, which I used <laughs> both to get rid of his guys. That's a little ridiculous. Um, and... Than the blockers and everything. It's just, there was no way for him to make it through there. And, I mean, it is what it is. All right, now let's get to the top two matches. Probably going to be a lot of talk about this one. Uh, um, let's just say Variance was bad in his favor and very good for, the, uh, for Tom. Tom Rogers. Yeah, yeah. for Tom Rogers. Okay, so let's get to this game. Um, okay, well... The guy was really nice. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I had no problems with him as a player. He's goofed around a lot, which was cool. Um, Made it's a lot like of jokes. He was playing dragons, so I was a little like, oh, you know, here we go. Um, and in the first game, I pretty much was in a very strong uh, presence. I was yeah. like, I, yeah. I was developing my board state really well and everything. And um, his turn five, he hard cast bottle. Uh, you know, I'm shuffling up, and he, lo and behold, he flips over Infernus the Immolator. His one of 
Yes. Well, <laughs> I assume. Yeah, that's um, what that's what I think he said, or what the other guy said. Is one of emulator comes down and so, wipes his board. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, it wasn't like much of a board wipe. It's just the presence of it. Yeah. Because uh, I had like a grudge weaver, so I mean, he had a, a bird out, so he got a draw off of it, but then he lost a card. Um, and the thing is, I was an uphill battle that entire time, and I almost made it back. Um, I just needed, I think, one more mana, because I was, like... Yeah, that game, you had Mark at the ready, mm -hmm. I remember that, and he played another creature. Yeah. So we didn't, like, if he hadn't, if it hadn't been, and he was, the other guy had, like, one or two cards in his hand, and he wasn't playing anything, he wasn't playing anything. We thought he would just continue to charge mana. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and he, um, yeah, and he play as soon as he could play Marco Klima, the other guy landed another creature. Yeah. So he, if he wouldn't have played the extra Lux, uh, I would have gotten rid of his entire board. Um, but instead, I got rid of a Lux, uh, Nix, and like a Keeper, and. I mean, and, yeah, and emulator was just there. Yeah, emulator is like you know a thousand more, but even so, it's like he didn't attack with it. He like got rid of my Kalima instead, and then I don't know. It's just shenanigans. But I was Bottle. basically uh, in control till turn five, and uh, from there, it's just there wasn't much I could do. Yeah. So sadly, he almost came back, but it didn't. Yeah. Um, game number two. Uh, game number two. It was basically. A repeat of game one. A little a bit, but way. yeah, no. I mean, I knew he had, you know, like, what he had in his hand, because I played Mesmerize. And, you know, I chose to get rid of a Nyx instead of, like, you know, some other cards. Like, he had a Herald, he had Storm Spark and things like that, but he only had the one red cor uh, card in hand. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, he's going to have to throw that in mana uh, if he wanted to play anything like that, or he's going to have to wait. Oh, I was playing cards like Ripper Reaper and trying to get rid of his board state, and um, eventually he got out the Herald and then got out the Storm Spark because he had drew into another Herald after he put <laughs> one in mana. <laughs> um, and basically he went in and uh, apparently in that process he drew another Immolator uh, and dropped that. Yeah, it's Storm Spark, Swain Herald, Immolator. And then it just. It was just so difficult to try to come back from that, and uh, he hit. And no, he he played another bottle at some point, and he hit a Varaka, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was it was ridiculous. like ridiculous. I don't know. Honestly, it's like <laughs> that game. I, I don't really know what else to say about it. I mean, if I would have had maybe a little more removal in the deck, like there, there's definitely some changes I'd make here and there. But and here's the biggest thing. How the game ended. Sat very sadly, guys. He had no shields. He was on nine mana. He tops in a Kalima. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting there like yeah. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, because rough. and he the other guy or Tom only had three guys on the board. Yep. Um. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I was at ten mana, that would have been like you know, a game breaking. Around. Yeah. I've been like you know, but uh, I mean, it happens, and I mean. The guy's a good player. He just definitely had a little more on his side than I did. Um, but, uh, like you said, my deck's not based around... So, that's a... Uh, variance. Yeah, variance. <laughs> that's a, uh, his rounds. Okay, so... Since that's a pass now for all of us, looking forward, what do you anticipate for the Winter Champs? What, uh, what, are, you, what are you thinking about? <laughs> what are your thoughts with it? I'm not saying, like, you're like Kalima deck I'm just asking what your thoughts are with the entire thing well first of all I'm like super excited so well, yeah <laughs> um I'd hope so <laughs> I finally get to meet all the other you know players in the community um you know you got Thunder Saul and Robbie Stewart um uh Chris Claiborne if you guys are all going to be there that'd be pretty cool to meet you guys um Kaijudo Channel and I've already met Team Peach but you know hey uh, it, maybe maybe our admin at the dojo, Scott Rivers, will be there. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, it's, it's going to be in Texas. So. Yeah. Um, looking forward to meeting everybody. That's probably, like, one of the highlights. And then also meeting Wizards. Uh, just, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's really cool. Um, 
But in like terms of what's going to happen there, um, it's... <laughs> I know it's up in the I air, don't but know. do you have any thoughts at all with it? Well, the thing that's going to be really rough, and I don't know if everyone's really thought about this, but Invasion Earth's going to be out, and it's just going to be like two, like two and a half weeks in, and we'll have to... It's like the shattered meta all over again. It's like, okay, well, let's figure out what we're going to use from this. If people are going to make new decks, uh, how effective they're going to be. And it's just, it's rough trying to do that in like a two-week period. Uh, so hopefully we'll get a, a spoiler of the list here by Wednesday or Thursday, and then we can start planning. But uh, I, I definitely think corrupted decks are going to be a thing. Um, I don't know to what degree, but... Uh, it's definitely going to be something to look out for, uh, whether they just get teched into certain things or, you know, it's like... The whole deck. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. They, there could be something. But, I mean, Squalache or Vicious Squalache or whatever, he uh, is he, just going to be amazing. He's just absurd. Like, anyone who's like, oh, he's okay. Everything's a freakish test, freakish test subject. It might actually give me a reason to throw some water in my Kalima deck. Yeah. <laughs> Just send a show, just let you draw cards and hey. let your guys not die. Corrupted Kalima, you know, it could be a thing. Could be. Maybe. Maybe. So future thoughts from <laughs> Um, For those who are still, still trying to top, those who just don't have, like, their invites, those who don't even have a top eight win, or even just newer players to the game who want to go to an event, what is some of some advice you can give them that you have used to achieve your top? Um, well, first and foremost, it, you got to enjoy the game. Um, uh, I mean, honestly, it's like if it's not fun, you're doing it wrong. Uh, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. A lot of people are like, "I'm not having fun with this game," and it's like, then why do you play? Like, you've got to enjoy actually playing these games because you're going to be sitting there for six, seven hours. Or more, play Kaijudo yeah. at a KMC because most offer price support if you stick through at least three or four rounds. And if you go with other people, there's no point in throwing 20 bucks at them and going, oh, I lost three rounds and I'm only going to have three, three, I'm dropping. Might as well stick it through. Yeah. Uh, That's my opinion, at least. Um, so yeah, I mean, definitely got to have fun with it. Um test a lot, you know, I mean, I'm not talking about just good decks, I'm like, I, I'm, I, another thing that sort of goes along with that is I use uh, the site Trade Cards Online, or as I like to call it, Taco. <laughs> yeah. Inside joke, just, yeah. just, just, yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, I use that a lot, and I make a lot of just random decks, like, they have like 28 decks on there. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, some of them have no relevance whatsoever. Like, I made... It, it's funny, because uh, I was talking to uh, Tom Rogers, and uh, he said that he had made, like, a little hissy deck, and I made a little hissy deck on there, too. I'm like, what? <laughs> he, he called it... Just for the record, it's called Hissy Fit. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> I don't know. No, you gotta have fun with it. You gotta try new things. Um, and by doing that, you might get new ideas. Now, I, I mean, I also, I write for pojo.com. I do the card of the days there. And that sort of also helps with it, too, because uh, for every card review I do, uh, you know, I think about different strategies that might happen with the cards uh, or what combos you could do with the cards. Uh, so that sort of increases my just overall knowledge base. Sometimes they're just bad, like Mark of Eternal Haven. <laughs> you give it time. I, I I still say it's not that good. Um, but. in itself, it's not. Uh, but if you combo with Haven and Ramp, it's not horrible, it's but just, it's still pretty bad. It's still pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> you're just better off like yeah. ramping into Haven. No, hey, hey, more power to you. You know, if you've got three Keeper Laws out and they play a spell and you're drawing so much that you have Havens in hand and Mark, you have Mark of Haven, go nuts. But it it's, no. <laughs> no, it's the, the um, right now the only real playable mark I think is Kalima. Yes, Tritonis is fringe playable, and it's only because it's eight mana draw three, but it's a really bad logo scan. Um, the main reason Mark is good, and I'm not referring to myself, uh, <laughs> uh, is just because 
it actually nets you real advantage. It's yeah. like, uh, oh, okay, they they had three creatures that cost them, let's say, like, uh, eight, four, and, like, five or something. So they just wasted all that mana and those turns playing those cards. Whereas um, drawing a card isn't, it's like, okay, an additional card. Yeah, so there's a big difference as to why he's running Mark of Kalima in his build over that. And that's the kind of stuff you guys get to look at whenever you're evaluating a card just from what I've learned from this guy actually teaching me more and more, is that you've got to say, does this card have actual validity in games? Can it actually do a turnaround? Can it actually, like, I was talking about, like, I don't think Mark Kalim is that playable because it's, you know, you have to use a Mono Darkness, blah, 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 and he got second using two copies in this deck. And that's the kind of insight you guys really need to have. That's why I'm always pestering him for, for deck ideas and, like, Hey, I want to like make this gimmicky Skyforce champion deck. Give me some ideas, and then I like throw it together and try it, um, or whatever. And you've got to experiment with cards because so people have what I call Yu-Gi-Oh syndrome, and it's the only card game I've seen that it comes from. No offense to any Yu-Gi-Oh players or anything. I'm one, so I understand. But there's a linear set of decks that everyone jumps on, and whenever 98% of the field is that deck. It's a bunch of mirror matches. And that has really transpired into Kaijudo. And people don't like to... I don't want to say they don't like to think it originally, but they don't really try to if they're coming in from a card game like that. They just want the best meta deck. And resource games are incredibly different than Yu-Gi-Oh! is. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're going to have cards like Logo Scan. It draws you two cards. It's like, okay. Yeah, and uh -huh. it's a mediocre card. Yeah. Uh, well, that's because in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can just play it and then get the cards, you know, yeah. so. But, um, yeah, it, as for, like, other things, uh, that I'd say, I, I mean, you gotta practice a lot, you know, I mean, get some time in to play with your friends or whatever, or your team, or people at your locals, uh, because if you, it, alongside that, you need to be comfortable with what you're playing. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been playing with Darkness for a long time, and, I mean, I've tried different builds with Slayers, I've tried different builds with this and that. But he had a constant uh, theme that he died Right, into. right, and, I mean, I'm really comfortable with that. Um, and, you know, if you like dragons, um, more power to you. But, yeah. uh... <laughs> Kimit, Kimitz loves them, actually, so... Um, She's our little dragon girl. <laughs> Any, anywho, uh... But yeah, no, you, you gotta have just something you're comfortable with, and the more comfortable you are playing with something, the more likely you will be able to do well with it, and you know the ins and outs of what it's going to do, your combos, so on and so forth. If you just gave the deck that I use to a random person, uh, it, they're not going to play it the same way that I am, um, because, you know, I play it differently. I have different strategies going on in my brain, and... And you know what you're doing. Like, for example, though, keep in mind that doesn't always, always work out. The This advice I give to people, I kind of gave to these two a little bit to help out, is think about your different matchups. Like, I went in with a deck I was incredibly comfortable with. I knew, uh, it was basically, uh, I mean, if you guys want the profile, even though it did terribly, um, <laughs> let me know. Uh... It was basically a Cobalt Control deck using Blinder Beater Primes, Andromeda's, um, and Orion's. And I'm really comfortable with Light Civ and, and using it myself. Hey, look, Light Civ. Cool. Sorry. And one of the biggest things that you have to understand is, like, remember your matchups with your comfort. Because somebody could be, hey, I'm on a Red Rush and I'm completely comfortable with it. But, like, how's it stack up against somebody's like, control issue, you, you've got to think about that, too, a little well, bit, I think. Well, going into that, I mean, honestly, that's what I did with my deck. I'm like, okay, yeah. the biggest issue was Rush, so I dealt with that. And it sort of went into the mid-range area. I'm like, okay, well, these blockers can deal with this, and then I have this removal, you know, with Medusa, and, uh, or, you know, with Devouring Smog, or Terror Pit, because there was the progression of removal. It was just amazing, because it's like, oh, then there's Mark, then there's Kalima. It's like, uh, because those are when, like, everyone's playing the big cards. It's like turn, you know, six, seven, eight, and it's just, like, answers. But, uh, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. It's like, I wasn't worried about Haven. 
because I had answers to Haven. Uh, in one game, uh, which I didn't mention, was okay. really, really... It was the only time I hit Blast when it really mattered. Um, they swung in with, I think it was a uh, Andromeda. They had like a, a Lyra untapped, and they had a Haven. Uh, they hit two Blasts, and one was uh, Terra Pit, so I went and I killed off their uh, Lyra, and the other one was Devouring Smog. <laughs> so I got rid of their Haven. Uh, that was the only time I've ever had like multiple Blasts there, and I mean, it happened. But... Okay. Um, any any other pieces of advice or is that really... I mean, honestly, like I said, you got to be comfortable. you got to enjoy the game and have people to play with. Uh, and test. Test, play. yeah. Even if it's on the uh, taco, you know, trade cards online. Um, it's, r it's really, really rough, like, sometimes because, like, you know, it's like the shuffling, the, like, the dragging, all whatever. But, I mean, you know, it's it, still, it's you're there. able to play. And, and it, you can get the idea of decks you're using. And uh, it also lets you have an idea of what cards to purchase, too, to save some money and make sure you need those cards. Yeah. That's um, important. But, yeah, this is for other tips. It's just like, you know, don't give up. I mean, because, I mean, I've, like I said, I've had a lot of history with other card games uh, and doing well with them. But, you know, my first KMC... Um, my last round, I lost to uh, the guy who got second in uh, uh, Akron, uh, uh, Richard Zav. And because you know, I got shocked with the storm spark. Uh, yeah. Uh, in mono red Drakens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's beating a dead horse. But uh, basically, like... basically, I lost and I went, because of that, I went like 3 3. And I wasn't too happy with that. Uh, the next KMC, um, I did a bit better in Akron. Uh, I ended up going four and two. Uh, my only losses were to uh, there was a ruling issue with Scamp and Storm Spark, which they shouldn't have messed up. They on. used Yu Gi Oh rulings. Yeah. Bad. Don't yeah. do that, please, judges. Um, and then the other one, what was it? There, there was a, there was a reason I lost another game. I don't know. Um, I think it was. Versus light was was it light fire that the ruling was messed up? Yes. Okay. Sorry, so, I, I was sitting there beside him and I was like. Yeah. Okay. No, I I lost another game too, but the the one with the ruling, that he, would have changed it, and yeah. I would have been X one, and would have most likely gotten in, but uh you know hey and then I went to the next one and and he train wrecked. I made it so, <laughs> I, I mean I'm really excited I'm, I. Uh, we look forward to meeting everybody. So yeah. Any uh, any closing statements for the kaiju community? Anything you want to add of your own personal thoughts or feelings? Um. I mean, honestly, like I said, it's it's an amazing game. Uh, thank you, Wizards, for bringing it back. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I really enjoy it, and I'm looking forward to meeting you all and seeing you all and playing against all these awesome decks down in Texas. So, uh, want to bleed us out? Yeah. Well, until next time, guys, remember to keep calm and game on. See you guys.